Hey, what's up, guys? Okay, so I had to do one more. I had to do. I had to see this uh, Thor versus Vegeta. I'm going with Vegeta on this one. I'm one and one right now in my uh, in my picks. I picked I picked Obi Wan and I picked Vader. Obi Wan won. Vader lost. Let's go, Vegeta. Oh there, mighty warrior. What business havest thou upon Earth? Throw that hammer at me again, and my business will be polishing my gloves upon your face! <laughs> <laughs> Didst that count? Thou fightst well for a mortal. Alas, you face a god. I have evolved beyond gods. Okay, too bad you have to do so you always run in trouble. The prince of all Saiyans, and you can burn in hell! Big Bang Attack! <laughs> Tell me, does a god such as yourself feel fear? Despite Vegeta's immense I power, thought, I thought I thought Vegeta was going with God of Thunder sure. had him outmatched in several It looked like he, he had him. the big one who was stronger despite being up against the God of Man. Strength Vegeta actually matched up pretty closely with Thor both could output power far in excess of destroying a single universe It's always tough to get an exact number for Dragon Ball Super's most powerful characters But we can combine the size of universe 7 with multipliers from Vegeta's transformations to get a rough estimate It's important to note that Ultra Ego's power boost has never been stated But we do know that Super Saiyan Blue Goku and Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta were roughly even in power when Goku applied a Kaioken times 20 boost to fight Jiren, Vegeta kept up after going blue evolved. 
implying that both increases in power are roughly the same increase. Similarly, Blue Vegeta matched base top, and needed Blue Evolve to keep up with Top's God of Destruction form, which is extremely similar to Ultra Ego in theme and purpose. Given this is the best current example of a measurable form akin to Ultra Ego, we can assume that Ultra Ego's boost in power, at least initially, could be extremely similar in terms of a percentage increase, making Ultra Ego's original state about 20 times more powerful than Blue Evolve. With that in mind, Vegeta at his peak could destroy a universe roughly 260,000 times over. And Thor was pretty close to that. Taking a look at the Marvel Universe's size, which has a radius of at least a trillion light years, as well as scaling to the World Breaker Hulk, Thor ended up only about 10 times stronger. Not terribly different, and it's definitely possible Vegeta's power could increase during the fight to match it. But even if he was stronger, it wasn't the only thing that mattered. Ultra Ego's damage absorption could only do so much against an opponent like Thor. Vegeta may have trained as a warrior from birth, but Thor has been fighting for millennia against a much wider variety of foes, allowing him to adapt to Vegeta fairly easily. And the fact that Thor was way faster gave him a lot of leeway to use that extra combat experience. Applying Vegeta's transformation multipliers to the shockwaves from Goku and Beerus' punches, Vegeta should be able to fight at nearly 300 quintillion times the speed of light. But scaling to Ares moving within plague time? Thor would be over 70 quadrillion times faster. More than fast enough to avoid Vegeta's key attacks, and even more importantly, absorb all of them with Mjolnir. This alone could shut down all of Vegeta's ranged attacks. Sure, Veggie could absorb it back with Spirit Vision, but he'd have to hit Thor first. And with that much of a speed difference, that's easier said than done. And since Thor can just will the energy out of somebody, he could just take it right back. And then some. Even without absorption, Vegeta's key reserves are not infinite, and many of his battles have ended with him at low energy. He was exhausted by the end of the Tournament of Power, which lasted about one hour in total. Meanwhile, Thor fought an army for over a month straight. Theoretically, Vegeta could have ended the fight immediately with Hakai, if not for the fact that Thor has resisted existence erasure before, including physically, spiritually, and temporally. Meanwhile, Vegeta had no way to match the God Blast, which could have killed friggin' Galactus, and that guy has threatened the infinite multiverse with destruction just as a side effect of his battles. That's a level of power beyond anything we've seen in Dragon Ball yet, let alone Vegeta. Vegeta was never going to go down easy, but Thor's raw power, speed, and devastating godly abilities were too much for the Prince of All Saiyans. Vegeta Mjol nearly won until Thor blew his mind. You might say that pun was ha kind of terrible. Huh? You don't do puns! We've talked about this! Aw. My thing. Well, the winner is Thor. That was the best match. I, I said at the beginning of the video that I was uh, one and one. I didn't actually. I was two and zero. Oh. I picked uh, Doctor Doom to beat Vader. I just wanted Vader to win, uh, but I went two and one because I I thought I thought Vegeta could beat uh, Thor. So two and one tonight. Uh, post your comments down below. Like this video if you liked it, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks, guys.